So you get up and you realize you have no hot water. Well, it's probably one of two things. Your water heat is leaking, put out the pilot, in which case you pretty much have no choice. You're probably going to need a new water heater. Or you just put the water heater in or it's a few months old and you have no hot water. And you're saying, how could this be? I just had this heater installed or it's only a few months old. Well, probably what happened is the thermocouple lead in your gas water heater probably got loose or actually is bad. And you're wondering, how could that happen? Well, that's what this video is about. I'm going to walk you through a couple of scenarios on why it may happen. I'm going to show you an old water heater, and I'm going to show you an upgraded water heater. And pretty much this is a screencast tutorial to walk you through the process. But folks, use caution because a repair like this should be done by a pro. But all that information is coming up right now. Folks, before we start, I have to issue a troll alert. You know who you are. Those are the folks who think I talk a little funny, I drone on too much, I moan too much, and I don't get to the point. YouTube has created a wonderful feature. It's called Fast Forward. You can fast forward this video and go see what you want to see. But to the rest of you who have graciously clicked on my video, thank you. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this presentation. All right, so what we have here is a good old basic water heater. I would guesstimate this heater is probably about 15 years old or better. At the top, you'll be looking at the fuel control valve, a.k.a. gas valve, a.k.a. Uh, unitrol valve. It has a well on it that sits in the water and senses the temperature. At the top of that valve, the top left, you'll see the on-off pilot knob. In the front is the temperature dial. To the left of that control, you'll see the gas supply. Moving on down to the bottom, bottom left, that's where the thermal couple gets connected. Uh, right in the middle is the main fuel supply tube. On the right is the pilot tubing. And down at the bottom is the open burner box. Now that burner box is open to the atmosphere. That's where the fresh air goes in. If you were to remove that silver panel, you would actually look right in there. You'd see the thermal couple. You see the pilot head. You see the burner. You know, when the burner comes on, you would you would be able to see everything. Now the the newer heaters are all sealed. The uh, There is no door on them anymore. They're actually uh, sealed. Uh, you have to remove a couple of screws uh, to remove the uh, access panel. The heaters are actually sitting up off the ground now. I'd say any it's about two and a half, three inches to where the fresh air comes in. Fresh air goes in through the bottom of the heater, and that's how the modern heaters work. But you're going to see that coming up. Next, we're going to jump into uh, a thermocouple. I'll show you what exactly what a thermocouple looks like, and then we'll follow it up with a thermocouple and a pilot head assembly, and then we'll move into the uh, new, uh, more modern water heaters. All right, so here's the thermocouple. Now, as you can see, they come in varying lengths, 24, 36, 48. I generally carry 48s. If there's any excess, I just leave it coiled up by the gas valve. Over there on your left, I, I noted the pilot zone, which is kind of like the upper third of the thermocouple itself. That's the optimal place for the flame to be hitting in order to give you the best bang for your buck in terms of creating the right amount of millivolts necessary to keep the fuel control going. The opposite end gets connected to the fuel control valve, whether that be a water heater, a boiler, or anything that's pilot driven. And in this next slide here, I'll show you the whole uh, rig, basically, with the pilot head, the thermocouple, and the pilot tubing. So here's the complete assembly, the pilot head assembly, which the thermocouple and the pilot head mounts to. And that gets mounted to the burner inside the water heater. Uh, you'll see this also on gas boilers. It'll be mounted to one of the burners, depending upon how many burners you have. It'll be in a specific location. Both of them, in turn, go back to the fuel control valve where they connect. Once that thermocouple uh, senses enough heat to where it can start throwing out the little milli, milli voltage that it puts out, tells the gas valve, okay, there's a flame here. So when the actual call for hot water or the call for heat comes on, it'll, it'll allow the gas valve to turn on. So let's move on, and I'm going to show you the rating plate on a water heater in my facility, and then we'll move on. I'll show you what most of the water heaters look like today. Again, manufacturers have their own um, 
uh, different ways of doing things. You know, each water heater is not going to be exactly the same, but what you're going to be seeing is pretty much as close as you're going to be able to get to, to what's out there in the market today. Okay, and as you can see here, it's an A.O. Smith water heater, a very popular brand across the country. This is a Model X CV50, which is a 50-gallon capacity, and it has a manufacturer's warranty against tank leakage for a period of 10 years. It's got 40,000 BTU input, and it's capable of recovering 40.94 gallons an hour at a continuous flow. This heater was manufactured on uh, April 18th of 2011, but actually this heater was not put into service until December of 2012. So now that we got that out of the way, let's jump in and take a look at what this new modern water heater looks like. So here's a modern looking water heater. This is what most of the water heaters look like coming out of the... Uh, manufacturers today. It's an upgraded fuel valve. It's got a status light on it, which is nice because that'll blink uh, about every three seconds, letting you know that the pilot's on. And if you look at the left side, lower left side, you have the igniter cable. Right above that, there is a button that you would push to create the spark when you're attempting to light the pilot. You have a main fuel supply tube. That's that corrugated tube. And I apologize, but underneath that copy, uh, I don't know if you can quite see it. There's a little sight window, so you can look in there to, to make sure the pilot is on. Then you have the pilot tubing. You have a thermal rollout protection. I'll explain in a second. And you have a thermal couple upgrade, what I call an upgrade. This is not a typical thermal couple that screws into the bottom of the valve. That little copper looking wire, if you will. These are actually uh, wires that go into a shielded cable and then they connect. Uh, on the burner to something that looks like a thermocouple. It's a little, it's a little more, it, I, 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 the only way I can explain it is that it's like maybe the thickness of a pencil uh, as opposed to being a very skinny thermocouple, but it's a little beefier and it's got the wire leads coming out of it. And uh, that's how this manufacturer does it. Again, every manufacturer is going to be different. So let's move into the next slide and I'll give you a close up of the fuel control valve. So this is a close-up of the fuel control valve, and you can see the status light, which is going to blink once the, the pilot gets warm enough, or once the thermal couple or the thermal leads get warmed up enough, it'll start to blink at three-second intervals. You have the igniter button, which you'll push, and at the same time, now that settings button, you have to put it specifically on pilot, and when you put it on pilot, it allows it to be pushed in. So what you would do is you would push that in while simultaneously uh, hitting that igniter button until the pilot lights. And you have to keep your finger on the settings button until you start to see the light blink. Once that light starts blinking at three second intervals, you'll know that the pilot is lit. It also has a list of other um, flash statuses up there at the top, which you can take a look at. And right below the word Honeywell there, you, those are where the, the thermal leads on this particular gas valve are located. So we're going to jump down to the bottom, but first I'm going to take you, actually I'm going to take you down to the very the bottom underneath this valve, and then we'll go down and I'll show you the, uh, the combustion um, cover and the screws that you're going to have to remove in order to take everything apart. So we're now looking at the bottom of the fuel control valve. On the left is the igniter cable. In the middle is the pilot tubing, and then you'll see the corrugated main fuel supply. And off to the right are the thermal leads. They are actually uh, coming up from the bottom, and they're actually shielded. Uh, kind of looks like a mini BX cable, if you will, which goes through the, uh, the, the actual uh, access panel. And then they go up to the bottom of the fuel control valve where, where they connect. So in this particular case, again, they're using a, a, a thermal leads as opposed to a thermal couple. So let's drop down to the bottom and see what this access panel is all about. All right, so here is the sealed combustion door. There is a screw to the right, screw to the left. There's actually a gasket underneath that panel. And what you would have to do is disengage the igniter cable, disengage the two leads that are coming out of the bottom of the uh, fuel control valve. Those are the thermal 
couple of leads. And in this case, it's not a thermocouple. It's a set, it's a set of wires. You can see that little braided cable that's going through the combustion door. You'd have to disengage the pilot tubing. You'd have to disconnect and disengage the main gas supply tubing and very gingerly remove the door, pull the whole burn assembly out. And as you can see in this case here, they have the uh, thermal leads wired in series to that thermal rollout switch. So if that switch were to get heated up for whatever reason, it would break the circuit, the pilot would end up going out. The result is going to be you don't have any uh, hot water. So let me show you what this puppy looks like when you get this out. I'll, I'll give you an idea of what you're going to be looking at. Uh, and there's this upcoming illustration. They don't, actually don't use the thermal leads. They actually use the traditional thermal couple which depending upon manufacturer, you may have a thermocouple. In this case, there is no thermocouple. There are a set of thermal leads, the red and white thermal leads. So uh, let's take a look and see what's going on. All right, so this is what this puppy looks like when it's removed. And in this particular case, they're actually using a traditional thermal couple as opposed to thermal leads or, or wires. As you can see over on the left there, you have the thermal couple and the pilot head. It's hard to see both of them, but they're both there. The arrow is actually pointing directly to the thermal couple, and in front of it is the is the pilot head. Then you have the igniter, which is the part that will throw a spark when you push the button on the fuel control valve. And you can see the main fuel supply tube. You can see the igniter cable. Uh, you could also see the pilot tubing and... There actually is a rollout protector that's wired independently um, from, from, the, uh, from the thermocouple, um, unlike the one we, we saw in the previous illustration where it was actually wired in series with the thermal leads. This is a completely, you know, completely different manufacturer, but same concept. It's really not all that different. You have to go through the same moves. You have to unscrew the screws, disconnect all the pilot tubing, and very gingerly remove everything in order to get at that thermocouple. It's it's not an easy task. It's it's kind of a pain in the butt, especially on the new water heater. So let's now I want to jump down and show you the bottom of the heater. As I mentioned, these heaters are raised off the floor because they're getting their fresh air in through the bottom. I'll show you what that looks like, and we'll finish up by showing you where you should leave your water temperature once you set this thing up or once you get it going again. Uh, so let's take a look. Now, this is the bottom of the water heater. As you can see, it's raised about, about two and a half inches, two and a half to three inches, depending upon the manufacturer. And some of the manufacturers have a filter already wrapped around the heater. Some of them will supply it in the box and you can just put it around and you can snap it on. As you can see here, I actually took mine off. I mean, you have to vacuum it every once in a while. And if this is in a room, uh, for instance, in a laundry room where there's a lot of lint going on, you have to really be diligent about keeping that clean because if no fresh air can get in through the bottom, uh, the pilot's going to extinguish and you're going to be faced with no hot water. Uh, and obviously, as you can see here, I took the filter off because uh, I'm a little lazy and uh, I wanted plenty of air getting in there and uh, it was a pain in the butt vacuuming it. But uh, at any rate, I don't advocate you leave the filter off. You should leave it on, especially if you're in a laundry room and you've got a lot of lint going on. You're just going to have to get under there and uh, and make sure it's clean. Uh, you know, Otherwise, you're going to be faced with uh, a pilot outage. And this is what the filter looks like on this particular heater. This snaps into that front panel you just saw. And really, you don't want any lint getting in there because if the lint gets in and up on the bottom screen where the air can get in for combustion, it's going to be really, really difficult to get off. So I suggest you keep this on. And if this gets clogged up, go under there with a vacuum. You vacuum it out. You're good to go. So do not do as I do. Do as I say. And I say, leave the filter on. All right, let's move on. We'll talk about the temperature you should leave your water heater at once you uh, replace the thermocouple or once you set up a new heater. And then we will wrap up this tutorial. Okay, folks, this is the magic number. 120 degrees is more hot water than you should need. If you take a look at this label here, it tells you how long it takes to get scalded. Now, at 120, it takes five minutes, which is quite a long time. But what's incredible is as it goes up in 10 degree increments, how the time actually decreases. And these are for adults. This is not for a child. For a child, this happens much sooner. 
So I strongly suggest you set your water heater at 120 degrees, go into the instruction manual, see what the letters on the dial correspond in degrees and set it up accordingly. All right, folks, we're going to move on. We're going to drop down to the bench. I'm going to show you an actual pilot head, a thermal couple, and a thermal lead with the wires. And then we will wrap this tutorial up. Okay, here we are on the bench. And as you can see, we have a few items that I want to bring up and show you. Uh, first is, this is the actual thermal couple. This is a typical thermal couple. And this particular thermal couple is made by Honeywell came in this package. It comes in varying lengths. Like I mentioned, I use 48 inch thermocouples, but they come in 24, 36 inch versions. So typically the upper third of the coupling is the part that the flame needs to be hitting coming out of the pilot head. That would be the optimal part. And I will show you how to mount that in the pilot head in just a second. What I want to bring up here is this is a millivolt generator. This is uh, like you saw in the uh, presentation. These are the thermal leads. There's a set of thermal leads here. These are shielded leads. And this, unlike the thermal couple, you can see, like I was mentioning, it's, it's, it's a little beefier mechanism. If I bring this up and see if we can compare them, you can see what the two of them look like. And I myself have never had the occasion to change one of these on a water heater. I did do this on my own fireplace home because my fireplace has a uh, self-generating, you know, uh, millivolt uh, pilot generator, which is what you're looking at. And I, I did have the occasion to change that on my fireplace, but I have not changed one in a water heater. Most of the situations I've come across is that a thermal couple burned out on a water heater. But let me bring up a pilot head here. Now, this pilot head is not a pilot head you're going to see on a water heater. I, I'm just bringing this up to show you how to mount the thermocouple. This pilot head is a T-pattern, meaning it shoots out to the right, it shoots out to the left, and it also shoots forward to heat up the uh, actual thermocouple. But essentially, you would have your pilot tubing coming in the bottom here. This is where the gas comes in, which shoot out here. And your thermal couple would get mounted in the bottom here. And then that ultimately would end up sitting in here as such. Now they give you in the box with the thermal couple, they give you two items. And one item is a little sleeve that sits over the thermal couple like this. And you would simply put it in here. And there are threads in here. There is a little. Uh, mounting nut here which gets screwed into the bottom of the pilot head here and you can drive this up you drive this up with a pair of pliers and if you snug it up it keeps the thermocouple up there so it can't move back and actually, the flame comes out of here and shoots right to the tip of the thermocouple. And that's how this works. Again, this is a T-pattern pilot head. Please don't mistake this for something you're going to see in a water heater. In a water heater, you're going to have a single. It's either going to face right or it's going to face left. It's not going to shoot out both ways. This I actually use in a, in a furnace that has... Uh, a large amount of burners, and I want the flame to be shooting out to the left and right so that when the fuel does come on, uh, everything ignites at one time. So pretty much, now, on a new heater, sometimes, depending upon how this is mounted, sometimes these things in transit, will they'll fall down, they'll drop back, and the flame cannot hit the upper, the upper third of the thermocouple, and as a result, it doesn't heat up correctly and the pilot will go out sometimes you'll see them down here like this and 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 the, and the flame is shooting above it because this thing belongs up here now different manufacturers of thermal couples supply you with different mounting options now if you for some reason lose this little puppy or you misplace it they also supply in the box 
this little almost like a little spring clip so what you can do is you can put this right over the thermal couple and you just push it down all the way and this just keeps it from pulling down and then we will go back in the pilot head and you would drive this nut all the way up just like you did before with the original sleeve there. The only thing this thing does differently is it actually doesn't snug it up. The thermocouple's still gonna kinda float around in there. It'll be able to rotate, but it will not be able to fall back, which is really all I'm interested in. So you get this up as, as tight as you could. And you see, it's, it can move. It actually moves, but it will not fall back. And that's all I'm interested in. I'm interested in having this thermal couple up high enough so that when the flame shoots out, it's gonna shoot up and hit the tip of the thermal couple. And the heat uh, creates millivoltage and it travels along this little copper capillary tube into the fuel control valve, and that's what keeps the circuit on, keeps the pilot on, so that when there ultimately is a call for hot water, the hot water heater will come on and ignite. Same thing with the pilot generator. As long as the upper third of this pilot generator is warm enough and it's creating the right amount of millivoltage, the gas valve will stay on. When there's a call for hot water, it'll come on. And that's pretty much it, guys. You're going to have to get in there, remove the burners. There's no uh, simple way to do this. You cannot reach your hand in there and try to do this one-handed. It's not going to work. I can tell you because I've tried it. So typically, again, this is what you're going to see. What you're looking at here, bear in mind, again, you'll see, you'll have a single, you have a single, you won't have a T-pad, you have a single patterned pilot head facing out over the burners, and you're going to have to remove the two screws that are mounted to the burners, get this pilot head out, you might have to take the pilot tubing out as well to do it, pull everything out, put the new thermocouple in, and then just reverse the procedure. So, again, I don't advocate uh, DIY is doing this. You're monkeying around with gas, but if you feel that you wanted to give it a shot, uh, hopefully I've showed you some useful tips. And um, yeah, that's what it's all about. So uh, again, in transit, these things could drop down um, and simply in the real world, they just burn out especially if they've been in there five, six, seven, you know, eight years, they just lose their ability to create the millivoltage necessary to keep the uh, gas valve going. And that is it, folks. That is my, uh, that is my, uh, or excuse me, those are my thoughts on, uh, you know, how to go about uh, mounting and replacing your thermocouple. So there you go, guys, my little tutorial on what could go wrong or why you have no hot water. Folks, are you the type of person that would make a repair like this yourself? Let me know down in the comments down below. Now, folks, personally, I don't think you guys should be monkeying around with gas repairs. I think it would be well worth your while to call a pro in. But hey, I'm here to give you some useful information. And that's all this is. It's just information. I'm not telling you what to do. Just keep in mind that across the board, different manufacturers are going to put their heaters together differently. So what you may have seen in the screencast may not be what you have. Folks, I want to thank you for stopping by. I appreciate you coming here and watching my videos. Stay tuned. I have more in store for you. I hope to be seeing you real soon. Stay well. And guess what, folks? Happy plumbing. Folks, after you finish watching this video, head on over to robertsessaplumbing.com. That's my website. Go up to the tabs up on top. There's a tab that says free download. Click that tab, it's gonna take you over to a page. It's a video of me. Scroll down to the bottom. You can watch the video if you want, but scroll down to the bottom, leave me your email address, and I will send you the links to my no-brainer home plumbing inspection checklist, which essentially is my method when I walk into somebody's house and inspect and look for little problems before they become big problems. The no-brainer home plumbing inspection checklist, a simple strategy to identify and avoid a plumbing emergency. You will get all five modules 
you will get the PDF worksheets, and it's all free, folks. So don't forget. Check it out.